Hi, this is Teo from Puckerblocks.com. Today I want to talk about core water cutters. QOR, that's pronounced as core. Uh, I bought this box set of 12 tubes a few months ago. I have been using this for a few months now and today I want to talk about it. This is the box set that I bought with 12 water cutter tubes inside. It's quite a big box uh, compared to this uh, 12 half pen box. This is probably three times the size. It also doubles up as a watercolor mixing palette as well with all these mixing wells inside. Now all the 12 tubes they are held on this plastic holder here. There's an indent here that I think you can use to put a brush but not a short handle brush but more of a pocket brush. The tubes here are 5 ml each. Uh, core cells individual tubes as well so they have 5 ml the larger tube would have 11 ml which is quite unusual because other manufacturers they use the 15 ml tubes so let me show you uh, how vibrant these colors are i usually use the watercolors outdoors so i've squeezed all the pins into these half pens here that i can bring outdoors easily and now i'm going to pin some color swatches and see how the colors uh, turn out. I've already pre-wet the pigments so that they can dissolve much easily. Main thing to note about coral watercolors is they use this pigment called uh, this binder called the Aquazo, which is different from other manufacturers. And what I find that in real when I'm outdoors painting the as compared to other brands, um, the pigments they are not as easy to rewet. It's uh, that's relatively speaking, because I find that somehow the pig, the binder affects the way the pins are rewet. So um, I find that other brands rewet much better. Colors in general are quite vibrant. But when I use them in the pen forms like this, um, you really need to dissolve the paints very much in order to get the vibrant vibrancy. This is a pyro red light. I've written some icons here. This SO, which means it's semi opaque but generally speaking all the colors in this box set they are quite transparent this viridian of viridian I have squeezed out the paint in this form because viridian when you squeeze it out into a pan like this it will dry into a rock and it will be almost impossible to dissolve This is not my favorite color because I'm not sure. I prefer Taylor blue. I um, mean Taylor green instead, which is a much stronger color. Let's go down to yellow ochre. Then the queen gold deep, queen of Crichton gold deep is a very nice. Um, reddish brown color very strong then we have burnt sienna burnt sienna here for core watercolors is a bit i would say a bit hmm, it's a bit weird although i cannot really put my finger to it then we have uh, French Ultramarine Blue. French Ultramarine Blue is actually has a bit of a violet in it. So it's not actually true blue like the French Ultramarine from other brands. And this is Taylor Blue. Very bright blue color. Lastly, we have Paints Grey. Uh, 
Okay, let's wait for them to dry and see how they look when they are dry. The colors are now dry, let's take a look. They are not as vibrant as I expect them to be. Maybe it's because I use them in this form, I squeeze them out and then let them dry and then I apply them. So that could have affected the saturation. And because it's not as bright as I expect them to be, I went ahead and paint uh, them straight out from the tube. So this is the difference. I think the difference is quite um, obvious. So these are from the tubes and these are from the from this form. Definitely if you want to get more vibrant colors, you have to paint from the tube. And there are some vertical streak marks. These are from my brush strokes earlier. It's not um it's not pour watercolors problem because I went ahead and tried to paint a flat wash with uh core watercolors again. Okay. If you paint it carefully you are able to you should be able to get this very perfect flat wash and this is the vertical strokes with the streaking vertical lines and this is Daniel Smith just for comparison purposes so um, nothing to worry about let me show you some color charts this is the color chart that I painted from the 12 colors Let me compare it with, let's say, um, Cotman. This is uh, Winston and Newton Cotman series. They are student brand. This is from the pen form. So even in the pen form, the watercolors appear to be more vibrant than core watercolors. And this is student brand. Let's take a look at Mission Go. Mission is a brand from Korea. These are squeezed out from the tube and painted, so they have the advantage there. It's not a very fair comparison here. Um, this is definitely more vibrant. Let me compare it with Daniel Smith. Uh, this would be a much uh, fairer comparison because this is the core palette that I use and this is Daniel Smith. In both cases, I squeeze the tube out into the pans, wait for them to dry and then I painted it out. Uh, for Daniel Smith, there's absolutely no difference from the dry form and from the tube form. So that is uh, what I like about Daniel Smith. But as for core watercolors, I find that when they are dried and you re-wet them, you will, it's very difficult to get the same sort of vibrancy. And somehow I feel that it's also a bit difficult to re-wet uh, the pigments. And you need to definitely put more water to dissolve the pigment and get more pigments out in order to get that same vibrant color compared to other brands. Let me show you some sketches I painted with core watercolors. I used half the sketchbook for uh, testing purposes with these sketches so you can take a look at this. All the sketches are actually in a separate uh, video I will post a link to that if you want to check out the whole sketchbook but I'm just going to show you the sketches that I painted speci specifically with the core watercolors. I feel that the colors are a bit dulled down maybe because I mixed them already and also this paper is a uh, dry uh, or a bit off white so it does give make the colors seem a bit dulled down. It is best to use core watercolors straight from the tubes. Like I've just uh, demonstrated, you get more vibrant colors from the tubes as compared to when you have to re-wet them again. And this is something that I noticed with core watercolors that is not, I do not see this particular quirk uh, with Daniel Smith or other brands that I've tried before. So definitely use these colors straight from the tube if you want to buy this 
uh, core watercolor. Oh, another thing is uh, core watercolors, they are a bit more expensive compared to other brands because they are, uh, for the same price, you get only 11 ml tubes with core watercolors, but you get 15 ml tubes with other manufacturers. So um, the cost factor is definitely there. That's all for today's video. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask me in the comment section below this video. I will post some links to where you can buy car watercolors in the video description as well. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more art product reviews and sketchbook features, sketching tips in the future. Thanks and have a nice day.